Hello everybody, Chad Schimmel back with you today. I'm making a Fortnite ring. And I am again, once again, doing voiceover because it is so hot I can't run the mic in the shop. So bear with me on that. But let's jump right in. So with Fortnite rings, there's a couple of things to uh, keep in mind. One is Fortnite is layers of paint, so it's not like a wood or a resin that's really stable. It's a very unique material and you gotta kinda treat it a little a little like that because it's not normal. Now I'm gonna be using a ceramic core ring, the blue one here. You can use stainless steel, you can use ceramic, you can use tungsten, whatever you've got. Ceramic is super light, uh, looks cool, and makes for a really nice ring. Now these are just different chunks of Fordite. You can see they're cut different ways. Uh, it gives you different looks, whether the lines go around the ring or across the ring, or there's uh, swirls in the paint, so it just is your choice to make it. Now I'm going to be using my SC3 chuck uh, on the Herald lathe again, and you probably recognize that waste block. I've used it in several videos recently, and it's about done. It's almost toast, but uh, one last time here I'm going to square it up, and I'm just using my Easy Wood tools to square it up so I have a nice flat surface to glue my ring blank. I like to drill a hole in the ring blank and use the live center to line it up. That way when I put the glue on it and I use that hole in the blank, it is perfectly centered, especially with this blank because I don't have a lot of extra material around the ring. So if I was to glue this a little off center, I might have a flat side on my ring, which I do not want. So I'm gonna use thick CA and accelerator from Mercury, which is my go-to glue. And I like to put the glue on the blank side and then spray the waste block uh, side with the accelerator. And it just creates a quick bond. As soon as I slide that tailstock up to it and lock it in, I got about five or six seconds and then it's, it's glued on. So it makes it really quick and easy. While this is uh, glued up like this and I've got the tailstock, I like to do a little turning. I like to kind of face off the blank because like I said, Fordite is unusual and it's rarely straight and even. So this had an angle to it. So I like to round the blank and as well face off the front of it. So I'm working with a square uh, or fairly square piece. By using this uh, with the tailstock, it just gives a little more support and it's a little easier on the Fordite because that stuff can just literally peel apart at the layers because there's who knows what's in there. There could be dust or dirt whatever when they were painting so this just makes it easier and you can see here it takes no time at all to do this with the easy wood tools because the carbide just cuts the paint like nothing else so it's super easy the other cool thing is when you stop this you can see how cool the pattern is and that just gives you a little preview of what's coming so it's pretty neat to see how this works but anyway, I'm just kind of checking my ring. I'm using a small ring here. I think this was a size six or seven. No, 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 seven or eight maybe. Uh, and I want to make sure I don't, I have enough material because this block was, this was a scrap from a pen blank, but it was just barely big enough for this ring. So I went ahead and, and used it and I'm sure glad I did because it comes out really nice. So I'm kind of beveling into that hole for my drill bit now, uh, almost countersinking it just a tiny bit. And that way when I put the drill on it, it has no trouble getting in there without catching anything. But look how cool that looks. Uh, so my biggest drill bit that I'm gonna use here is a three quarter. What I'm doing there is just checking to make sure that my three quarter isn't bigger than my ring. Cause obviously if I drill a hole and it's way too big for my ring, that's not gonna be good. So for my drill bits, I like to start with a half inch. I drill a hole and then I go to a three quarter inch. And the reason I do that is it takes out a ton of material and when I'm using the boring head, it's fairly quick, usually just a few passes to get to my size. Now, obviously, if I was turning a size five ring, I would need to adjust my drill bit sizes, but for anything eight and above, this works pretty well. So I've got the drill bit in the uh, Jacobs chuck in the tailstock here. I'm just gonna progress into the blank carefully, especially carefully at first. This being paint, you could easily grab it and twist the blank right off the waste block, uh, which knock on wood hasn't happened lately, but of course it can happen anytime. So uh, now I'm just gonna drill this out with the two drill bits and 
see where we're at. The other cool thing is the shavings, if you like to cast, the shavings make excellent casting because they look like uh, zebra stripes and tiger stripes, all kinds of cool stuff in there. So you can always save those, those drill bit shavings if you want. But that's the half inch hole. I'm gonna swap this out now for a three quarter, uh, which is, feels like a huge bit. I guess it is a huge bit, but it works pretty well. Uh, you can see there's not much left on that blank after we do this this three quarter inch hole, and there's not much much more material needs to be taken out to get to my ring size. So that's kind of a nice thing if you're working with this size of a drill bit. And I'm sure taking my time here. <laughs> So you can see it's just cutting in there pretty easy. Uh, depending on the depth of your blank, if your blank is way oversized for your ring, you don't have to cut all the way in. Or if you do, you can always part it off and, and do two rings. This piece wasn't big enough for that, but I basically went in just to the wood block so my ring would stop when I hit the wood block when I put it in. So now I'm all done with that. Done drilling and we're going to use the boring head. If you're not familiar with a boring head, uh, all it is is a tool holder that holds cutting tools that allows you to make small adjustments by rotating a dial uh, into your piece. So you can make a cut, back it up, adjust it a quarter of a millimeter or three millimeters, whatever you want, make a cut and then see how it is. Now this one, I got super lucky. I made one cut larger than my drill bit hole and my ring fit pretty much perfectly. So this doesn't happen very often and it wasn't meant to happen for the video but it worked out really well. <laughs> so this is thick CA. I tend to glue everything in with thick CA. You can use two part epoxy or whatever glue you're comfortable with. This is just what I found works well for me. I put plenty of CA in there. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of it gooped up at the back here when uh, when I take this off. But the thing is, I don't want to have any gaps. I don't want to have any spots without CA. And it comes out of the ring really easy, so I'm not super worried about that. Now, once it's glued in, this is a cool opportunity for you to turn the ring down. I'm turning the face here down to the ring, so I've got a little ways to go. But I can also turn the ring round because I've got a lot of material that I'm going to have to remove from the top of the ring uh, to make it a realistic size for wearing. So when it's still glued to the waist block, this is a great opportunity to kind of fine tune this a little closer to the end size. You don't want to go all the way to the end. You want to do that on the ring mandrel, but this gets you a lot closer doing this. And those shavings just look so cool. So here you go. I'm pretty close. Now I can start taking off the face uh, of the ring. And what I like to do with this detailer, I can not only do the sides really well, but I can also cut a channel behind my ring into my waist block. You'll see me doing that here. And that allows my flush cut saw to get in there and cut that off real easily. So you could probably use a razor knife or something, but uh, the flush cut saw works really well. So I kind of just prep the block for that by cutting a little channel in it right there. So. Do what works for you. I found this method for me. I'm pretty quick with it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going. Stick with it. So th this ring is already looking pretty cool. Um, that's the neat thing about Fordite is every time you stop it, you're like, whoa, that looks cool. So you got to just kind of keep going to where you get it to to what you like. There's that channel I cut behind the ring. You can see just barely in the wood and that will allow my uh, saw to fit in there real easily. Probably, I don't know, if I had to guess, 30 seconds with the saw, maybe less, um, and it comes right off, because you're not really cutting much. You can see the saw blade passing through the back there. You're just cutting the, the size of the ring, not the whole block. So it comes off real easily. And then you are gonna have some uh, glue and waste on the back there. You can even see there's a little bit of wood from where I cut it. And you can see all that wood in, or that glue inside, that's no problem. The inside is good because uh, it's slick and smooth, so you can just chip it right off. Here I'm putting the SC1, I'm sorry, the SC1 chuck back on and my sanding disc. This is one of our products, the sanding disc, and we use it all the time on the lathe. 
And what I can do with this now is use the sanding disc to remove that wood and glue on the back side of my ring. And I can almost sand it right up to the ring. Even if I brush the sides of the ring, it won't hurt it because it's ceramic, which is super, super hard. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is the ring cores we have at Turner's that are ceramic are a rough top. So you don't have to cut them or sand them to get them to glue in. They're ready to go. Uh, if it was a smooth hard top, you would have to use a diamond bit or something to scrape the top. Now I've got my ring mandrel back on. I'm using the Beal Call It Chuck, of course. And I'm using a ring mandrel. Now the trick with ceramic is you don't want to over tighten it. If you over tighten from the inside out, you will shatter a ceramic. So I like to, to hold the ring and kind of wiggle it as I tighten it. I want it just snug enough to where it doesn't move. Do not over tighten ceramic. Here I'm doing my final shaping. I'm using the detailer again. Uh, this isn't a negative rake, although just thinking about it right now, a negative rake would be the perfect choice. So I'm actually gonna switch my tool out for the negative rake uh, the next time I turn. But this still works perfect. I can do the sides, I can do the front, and just make it look just awesome. Now, this is the, uh, there's two sides of the ring, obviously. One side has this wavy action, which looks really cool. It almost looks like it's moving when I turn it. And the other side has the, uh, the spots, I'll call it, where the paint layers are cut. So obviously that's the more fun side, but they both look really cool. This is the negative rake on a uh, finisher mini tool. And I'm just using it to flatten out the top of this ring to where it's smooth from my detailer. Just look at it, make sure it looks good how you want it. Make sure there's no chips or tool marks. Uh, you can take it off and flip it. I like to inspect it a little bit before the final finishing. And this one's looking pretty awesome. So it's pretty cool. There's that side with those nice cool stripes. It looks really cool. So you can see me wiggling there and I'm just wiggling to where it snugs it and that's all. Last little bit here, I had noticed one little spot of uh, glue up on the edge, so I wanted to get right up to the ring. And one thing I do is I make sure my tool is just above the surface to where if I bump my tool into that ring mandrel, I don't catch those cuts in the mandrel with my tool tip. It actually bumps the bottom of the tool, so that helps. Now I'm ready to go, so I'm gonna clean up here real quick. I'm gonna grab my water tray. I like to have this metal tray with my water on it. Helps keep everything clean, plus it gives me a little flat surface to do. I'm gonna sand with 600 and then polish with Zona paper. If you've watched my videos, you're probably sick of hearing me say that, but it works, so why would I change, right? <laughs> the 600, uh, after turning with carbide, I don't like to go any lower because I feel like I'm scratching a smooth surface with, you know, if I started with 220, um, I'm putting big scratches in there that don't exist from my tools. My tools are carbide and they're super sharp, so they're leaving a smooth, flat finish. So this 600 is really just to make sure it's perfectly flat, make sure I don't have any sharp edges uh, on the corners. And you'll see this like slurry come off of these rings because I mean, I'm wet sanding paint. It's not like wood or anything. That's literally just paint paste. So it sands pretty easy. Always sand it wet. You don't want this dust in the air, but it's pretty easy. Sand with 600, jump to Zona to polish. And I just work through the six grits of Zona with uh, with the water keep it wet keep it moving uh, you don't want to have it heat up at all especially with this paint the paint can heat up really fast so it's important to keep it moving and keep it wet but this doesn't take long the whole sanding and polishing probably takes less than five minutes and I'm not showing every grit here for the full time but it's uh, it's a pretty quick process so this looks like white, our final one. And you can really see that ring start to shine even through the water. Um, so we shine it up with the white. And then I like to use, we have a thing called ring bling, which is, uh, it's like the step, step six of the uh, magic juice. And it really just is a nice cleaning. It cleans it and polishes it, gives it just that little extra shine. So I use one drop of the ring bling and I do this on pens too, acrylic and CA finished pens, but one drop of the ring bling is all you need and that'll really clean it up and make it shine like nothing else. So that is my final step 
And surprisingly, the Fordite really does take a shine nicely, and it's pretty, seems pretty durable. I don't do a CA finish or anything on it, and I've not had any trouble with that. But it looks really cool. Take a look at that. Who wouldn't want that ring, right? So we can pop it off of there, clean the inside. I always use the, the ring bling paper towel to wipe out the inside, make sure I don't have any glue or anything left in there. But that looks pretty good. That is a killer ring. I uh, hope you want to make a Fordite ring after watching this because they sure are cool. Now, this thing is super lightweight. It almost feels like nothing. I, I would feel like it's fragile wearing it. But thanks for watching.